Hi, Noah. Oh, hey, Roger. Hey, Jamie. Hi. So we're looking at the hive here and it has grown in population. We can tell that they've become self-sufficient. We don't have to feed them anymore at this time of year because they're already going to get their own nectar and pollen. We're gonna take a look inside and what we're expecting to see is this population having grown to maybe 40,000 bees. That's four times the amount we put in. It's amazing and as the hive grows throughout the summer, we'll probably have to keep adding more boxes to the top as they grow in population. Oh, so that's why you added the second box. That's right. So now we're gonna use the smoker to add some smoke to the hive. What's the smoke for? So the smoke keeps the bees calm. It prevents them from chemically communicating so that if there's one upset bee, it just stays at that one bee and it keeps the rest of the hive calm. For smoker fuel, we tend to use this cotton byproduct. We wanna add anything that's chemical free. You can even use leaves or grass. We'll take a look here. And what we're expecting to see is the stores of nectar and pollen. And that's what they're gonna be making into honey. You can see the nectar right here, it's this liquid. One thing that we can notice here is some of these bees have their heads inside the nectar and what they're doing is concentrating it. They're taking water out of it to make honey and that's their food source for the winter. So bees make honey so they have food when the flowers aren't plentiful. And what we do is we take a little bit off the top when we wanna harvest some because the bees will make it in excess. They make more honey than they need. Why don't we take a look at the lower box now and see how the queen is doing as she's laying more eggs. I'll move this box to the side and look at this. That's a lot of bees. You can see a ton more bees here. So as we add boxes, we're gonna see each lower box have much more activity and we'll expect the lower boxes again to have much more brood and the upper boxes to have more honey stored. Wow, and look at this. We call this the brood. So this is the developing baby bees. And as the queen continues to produce more brood, the hive will grow in population. That'll happen over the summer and we add more boxes. This looks like it's in great shape. And I'll put this back on. All right, let's take a look again at this upper box here. We call this a super. This upper box is superfluous to the lower box. It goes above and beyond what the bees might need. We'll take a look here because we want to see if there's some honey we can harvest. And I saw a very special frame before when we were looking inside. It has a different appearance than the papery brood or the baby bees at the bottom. You can see this looks waxy and white. We'll use this tool, the bee brush, to gently brush the bees off. Whoa. And they'll fall back in the hive. So I'll put this honey frame right onto the tray and I'll pass this over to you, Roger, so it. that Thank we can you. go in together and harvest it and I'll just cover the hive back up. Can't believe how heavy this is. One frame can hold about five to six pounds of honey. It's a lot of honey. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Roger, why don't you place that frame of honeycomb right down here in Jamie's shed. So it's good to come inside a bit away from the beehive so we're not attracting the bees when we're harvesting the honey. We don't want them flying all around. Honey's the only food that never goes bad. Did you guys know that? No. It's pretty amazing. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to add anything to it. You can even eat it right out of the hive. You're kidding, right? You want to take a taste? Absolutely. Sure. Got some spoons right here. Yeah. Hand one to you. Try it out. Oh, it's your hive. You go first. All right. Literally just scoop it out? Scoop it right out here. We've got two things in a frame of honeycomb. We've got the beeswax and you've got the honey. They're both mm. edible. That's special. And mm -hmm. you're tasting fresh flower juice right from your garden. This is mm. what your flowers taste like. I've got some good tasting flowers. Mm, sure do. Typically people like to only eat the honey without the chunks of wax in it. So we want to separate the two. And we can use basic kitchen equipment to do so. We've got a spoon here and we have a strainer that's sitting right over a bowl. And then it'll take a couple of days for the honey to separate from the beeswax and the strainer. We're going to collect the honey in the bowl and the beeswax at the top. So I know what to do with the honey, but what do I do with the beeswax? The beeswax, you can do tons of great things. For example, making candles, lip balm, even wood furniture polish. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give me a hand here? I could use some help. Just scrape it off with your spoon. Feel free to rough it up a bit. Don't worry if you damage the frame. When we're done with it, we're going to put it right back in the hive and the bees are going to repair it and reuse it. There won't be much left when I get done with it. <laughs> What's awesome too is with the sticky equipment, we'll put this back outside and all the worker bees will come and they'll lick it clean. It's sticky, messy, fun. It's easy to wash off with water. 
and there's no wrong way to do it. So let's take a look and see how this bowl is coming along below. Look, you can already see the honey dripping right down in there and the beeswax is separating up top, so we're harvesting the honey nicely. I can't believe you have to wait two or three days. It's gonna be worth the wait, I promise. But if you wanted to speed it up a little bit, you can use what's called a honey extractor, which is this big drum right over here. And I'll show you inside, this particular model of an extractor can hold three frames. So what I've done ahead of time to set up the honey extractor is I've removed the cappings from three different frames. And then I've moved each of the frames into the honey extractor. And next, I'm just gonna use this hand crank to work this like a centrifuge, and that'll push all the honey to the sides of the honey extractor, and they'll come right down and collect through this funnel. Jamie, actually, why don't you bring a bowl right over here and hold it underneath this spout? All right. So we're gonna see this honey come right out of the spigot here. I'll even tip it forward a little bit to help get that honey out of the extractor and into the bowl. Beautiful. Now you'll notice there's some bits of beeswax here, some bees, and those will all rise to the top, and then we'll just scoop them out, and we'll have some pure harvested honey. Wow, that's a lot of honey, and much quicker than waiting two or three days. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things to consider is honeybee health. We want to prevent disease in a hive. And so I'm going to step you through a little bit of what else to look for as the season progresses here. We have a lot of different things that can infect a beehive, and you want to just practice your regular beekeeping to learn what a healthy honey beehive looks like. We've got brood, we've got honey. So what I'm looking for is anything abnormal, like, like right here, there's a small hive beetle. This is an invasive pest of hives. It came over from Asia in 1998. One of the best solutions for diseases and pests in beehives is your fingers. Anything weird, squish, anything diseased looking, just remove it and replace it with a clean part. Right, if you did a chemical spray, you could not only kill the beetle, you could kill the bees. That's right. Insects can infect hives as well as viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Bees are so sensitive to different changes, so we want to be really aware of what we're putting in the beehive. So I'll close this back up. And going forward, keep an eye on that honey production. Remember just to skim some off the top there. We want to make sure that there's enough honey left for the bees to survive the winter. And then keep in mind to not let the heat out. So keep this cover on and then also keep a weight on top so the winds don't blow it off.